for sure staging you know what i mean you've been looking for it so here we go today i'm going to show you how you can stage any space virtually right here right now and if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing smash that like button hit the bell notification icon and subscribe let's go guys Here we go guys, the six components which I've developed with the time uh, since I started doing virtual staging. At the beginning, I didn't have really a great plan uh, and I, I didn't follow any steps. I was just dropping things inside 3ds Max and trying different things and the results of course were not consistent. But one day I decided to create a system and that system has been working great so far. And here's number one to align the image. The first component is to align the image inside 3ds Max. This has to be done perfectly, otherwise your results will be skewed. Second is to model the space. Modeling the space is still very important though. Although you're not building entirely the whole space, you have to model the room with its real dimensions. Otherwise, you'll be working out of scale and everything will be very awkward. Three, to adjust the lighting. Adjusting the lighting means you have to match and replicate the lighting conditions from that photo. Four, to decide on the design features. Of course, you have to get this done. There is real design happening there. You cannot just drag and drop. Okay, cut your catalogs. Five, to set up the materials. Well, setting up the materials is a little bit boring, but it might be interesting. It depends how, how long it will take you. Sometimes I lose hours or yeah, minutes it depends of the style and the luxury and the client it's, it's it, yeah this varies and it will vary for you of course and for me and it will vary for everybody and six is post-production post-production is yeah it's it might be fun I, I enjoy it in order to start you have to load up your image inside 3ds max with the viewport configuration all to be and then Click on the files button, find your image and load up this image inside your viewport. Then just press OK, it will be all right. And now you see me here, how I click Shift F to make the viewport more frame and this will represent how your image looks um, in real life. Something else which is very important is to uh, set the exact dimensions as is it on the photo otherwise you will get a very very wrong results the next important step is shadow capture setting up shadow capture requires three, three components the shadow capture itself tone mapper and your environment map which will be the photography of the room of the space the next Thing which is very crucial is disabling all three, all three buttons uh, inside the tone mapper because you don't want any applied effects onto the background image. You, you want effects applied only to your 3D objects inside. There's two very important things to do in shadow, inside the shadow capture is to set up the shadow amount of the, the material and the uh, uh, alpha mode to become always transparent and this has been working great for me i know there's other ways you can do that but for me this is the way how i do it the environment if, uh, map is very important as well so you have to make sure to include this um, tone mapper into the environment map slot because this will help you to achieve even more realistic light by by casting uh, an emitting rays from the uh, image itself onto the 3D models. Okay, the next step is to align the image. This can happen with the power of perspective patch, which can be found under the utilities tab panel. Uh, you will see the perspective match there. By activating vanishing lines button, you will see six lines and each pair uh, of colors represents the uh, X into the three dimensional space. Make sure you align those um, parts, but 
I suppose uh, since you're watching this video you're not a complete beginner and you'll be familiar with the method here which I'm describing but if you're a complete beginner and you don't know anything about the uh, perspective match please do let me know down in the comments and I'll make sure you receive the best tutorial I can provide you on the perspective, perspective match. Don't be scared to improvise. So you see me here, I'm using the, the camera uh, alignment uh, options. And they move the camera independently, not the object. And sometimes you can use uh, the model, you can amend the model with the vertexes or with the polygons. And you, you just saw me that I've, this object, which is uh, on my screen, is uh, from another project of mine. I'm, because I'm lazy, I don't like to create every, every time everything from scratch, so I uh, recycle and reuse most of the projects because this saves me time. And I advise you to do the same thing. And here I started building uh, the openings for the for the lighting, which is coming just in a second. Always make sure you build uh, and recreate every single opening, window, door, or balcony door, or whatever is the opening there, and make sure you populate that with lighting planes. There is nothing uh, too complex of setting up the shadow planes. Basically, you have to play with the settings to find uh, the intensity of the light or the, the sharpness of the light. And here you see me, I use two um, spheres. Uh, one of them is with almost uh, white material. The other one is chrome material. And by using those, I can compare um, how I see the shadows and the light uh, casting from the, from the light. Designing virtually is fun, trust me. You're free to do anything you like and anywhere. But there's a couple of rules you should follow. And one of them is to find your focus. Just like we were told in school, having focus is a very important thing. And here, the key element to any good composition is a strong focal point. This helps your viewers to settle on an important piece of your design. Second, to direct the eyes with leading lines. Just like you pointing at something when you want people to look at it, by positioning certain lines and shapes or furniture or decors in certain ways, uh, makes your viewpoint, uh, the design, basically uh, the viewer's eyes go where you want them to go. Scale. The scale and visual hierarchy are some of those creative fundamentals that can really make or break your designs. If you mess up your scale, trust me, it will look fake. Balance your elements is the next one. Balance is a pretty important thing in many regards and your designs are absolutely no exception. Make sure you balance those furniture and decors on all sides of the, of the, of the space. The next one is elements that complement each other. You've heard of complement complementary colors, right? But what about complementary design elements, complementary uh, furniture? Yes, this applies to furniture and virtual staging too. The next one is boost or reduce your contrast. Well, make sure you don't have highly contrasty areas or low contrast areas in your images because this creates or basically breaks the whole image. So even highly overexposed areas do, are not likable and I just uh, try avoiding those. The next one is repeat your design elements. Let's say you have to create 
five bedrooms uh, which are all in one house make sure you follow your uh, design line uh, throughout every bedroom do not create one of the bedrooms in classical style the next one in modern style another one in contemporary style it, it will not work trust me white space do not forget the white space please the easiest way to offend white space is to refer it to an empty space. Emptiness implies that it should be full of something, but at the same time, it, it's not doing its job. Yeah, it, yeah, makes sense, right? The white space, when it's used strategically in virtual staging, interior design, home staging, even in architecture, can help and boost your design clarity, which will make you happy and your clients will be even happier and their clients will be even happier so it snowballs so make sure to balance with white space if you don't have white space in, um, in your room or in this case and imagine you, you, if i have entirely blue space in the room i'd use objects with white bed sheets curtains anything with white and this will improve the image rendering nothing too complicated here if your image is 7k make sure you render at 7k if your image is 5k make sure you render at 5k do not compromise on size and pixels the next thing is i always uh, use threshold around 3 3.5 in this case is 3.5 and then the noising method is corona high quality at amount uh, dot 65 make sure you check the bottom uh, you check this um box of direct visibility override and it should be black as well the next uh, couple of tabs are not really necessary i mean corona is pretty smart and it will handle everything for you pretty pretty much well uh, the only three render elements i most of the time use is uh, the uh, reflect refract and id channel basically the only thing to mention to id channel is to make sure you as a method of displaying of the id to set to material id by doing this in your render element you will see all materials as ids which make it will make the selecting very easy post production is fun part as well from the whole process in my case i've chosen a very simple room so i don't have to do a lot of post, uh, photoshop here uh, rule of thumb, make sure when you finish rendering to save all images uh, as, I, as it falls. The beauty pass should be in JPEG and PNG. Then you have refract, refla, refract and ID passes. They can be in PNG or JPEG, doesn't matter really. The rest is very simple. All I try to maintain here in this image is um, by having a JPEG file, uh, you can use it as to show all the shadows and how they are baked into the photo and having on top a PNG file which is a transparent and, and does not contain uh, shadows you can easily uh, paint and manipulate behind and or, or underneath those furniture which are added so you can see me here how I, uh, I can amend all sides without destroying my image basically this is a non-destructive method i'm not saying this is a right or wrong this is my way how i do it after when i finish um, all amendments i go to the camera roll um, and i simply paint light paint here and there or i desaturate or add contrast or sharpness and that's it really <laughs>